have been uh, working day and night in COVID-19, in our preparedness, in our containment efforts, and now with the immunization. This virus is deadly. And, you know, let me say, the death that people have, it's a horrible, horrible, horrible death. Some of our nursing staff have PTSD from watching people die. And I was one of the first here at Jackson to, to get the vaccine. And I felt the first time hopeful for the first time in a while. I, I saw the beginning of the end of what has been nothing that any of us could have ever imagined would happen to our lives. We have an opportunity to make an impact on a devastating pandemic. This was unpredictable, unexpected. Uh, it's wreaked uh, a tremendous amount of havoc. The vaccine is our opportunity. Both Pfizer and Moderna have had very good safety profiles. I think everybody's been nervous because the vaccine came out so quickly. We have preliminary data in over 40,000 subjects that were preliminary studied before we started vaccinating with a 95% efficacy. This is very unique. There are very few vaccines in the history of medicine that have this high percent of effectiveness. 95% efficacy is like nothing that we have seen uh, other than the, the, the measles shot. The mRNA technology, which is what is used in both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine, has been in development for years, not just 2020 when we uh, were hit with COVID. The confidence in that methodology has been increasing continuously over the course of the past 20, 30 years. And so they knew that. They also, um, I believe, knew that by using me messenger RNA methodology, they can create it quicker and have a more effective vaccine in a shorter period of time. I think the third big issue is that with messenger RNA methodology, you're not getting the actual virus. Every other vaccine, you get a dead or weakened virus administered. So you actually get the real virus in you, the flu vaccine, rubella, mumps, uh, you know, all of, all of the vaccines, polio, everything. With this one, there is no live virus. The vaccine, um, you know, it's a messenger RNA that they attach the message to that goes in and, you know, help us develop uh, antibodies. So that's uh, another reason why we, why we trust it. What are the alternatives to not taking this vaccine? The alternatives are the potential of getting a deadly virus that you could get it and it, you might be totally fine, but you could actually give it to your mother, your sister, your brother, your neighbor, your auntie, someone, your child, and they might not be fine. And we don't know what will be the long-term consequences. Some people have brain fogs. Other people have had seizures. There are all sorts of cardiac consequences. Some people have heart, heart attacks, including young athletes. It's like a um, Russian roulette. How would you feel if you had an opportunity to stop something and you didn't, and then you have somebody who you love and they're affected whether, even if they don't die, but they're left without a limb? We've had people lose their arms, legs, fingers. They have a stroke and can no longer talk, walk, see. And it's all because you carried it to them and you had an opportunity to prevent it. Before we got the vaccine, you know, we didn't really have much hope at all. Preliminary evidence suggests that the vaccine will protect you from this mutant strain uh, of COVID as well. We have a responsibility to ourselves and to others, you know, to take whatever opportunities we have uh, to try to decrease our risk of getting it and to decrease the severity of the illness. I hear a lot of people say, you know, well, I have mask fatigue and I'm tired of the mask. We, we have to um, wear the mask, wash our hands and social distance, even with the vaccine. Because until we get a certain number, and the number I'm hearing is 80 percent, of the world, of the country, of your community, of the world, being uh, vaccinated and immune, we, we're still gonna be having this struggle because something we don't know yet, even though somebody is vaccinated and immune, you might not get the virus, but you might be able to still carry it to someone else. We're on our way to the end of this pandemic, but people have to take the shot. When things are safe again, hopefully Christmas 2021, 
I can't wait to be with my sister and her kids and her family and, and my dad all opening presents together. You know, I think it would be fun to spend time with the kids, uh, to be able to go to some of their events and graduations and weddings. I want to be able to go back to the gym and do my Zumba class and dance. I want to be able to go back and take care of my patients without having a mask and have this human and physical contact. I am so longing to hug my mother. <laughs> we have not been able to hug since last March. We all want this pandemic to be over. We are all part of the solution. The vaccine is one piece. We need to do our part and get on board.